Welcome to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people conform to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. But first, thank you for subscribing to the channel and for all those likes. Today we have 4 great stories, so let's get right into them, shall we? The first story is called No Sympathy. I was recently, about 6 months ago, hired by a big company to do IT. During one of the training sessions we were told to do 10 to 25 tickets a day. The tickets took a maximum of 3 minutes to answer if it was an easy case, as most of us had replies written up that we used over and over. So one day I did 31, another day when I was being lazy I still did 27. Bosses and supervisors were thrilled at me, but one of my higher ups was not. I was clearly making her look bad, because like I said the minimum per day was 10 and she's a skater. So she decided to spend all the free time she clearly had coming from my replies to tickets with a fine tooth comp, tearing apart everyone in reply as much as she could. Two days after I was told my work was great, I was informed that our work had to be submitted to a higher up and approved before being sent in. I was like, what? Two days ago you said all was well. But I just smiled, said no problem and then was handed a printed out Excel spreadsheet by the lazy higher up, detailing her shredding work. Three minutes into reading, I decided to go hunting. None of her responses were bad. All she did was rewrote things, some of which I didn't even write as I had used replies that my trainer had been using for years. I had asked at some point how to know how many tickets I do. The boss's boss had sent me a link into her account where not only could I see what cases I had done but everyone's cases. That's when I discovered why Lazy Higher Up hated me. I was putting her at risk of being fired by running circles around her. So since the lazy worker had been there longer, of course she was listened to. After a heated senior staff meeting, the boss's boss took all of us newbies aside and said we all had to get our work approved by a higher up before sending it out. Now I had shared a lot of my shortcuts with my co-workers, so we were all doing more work than our superiors got done. That must mean we are badly trained, right? Well let me tell you the stupidity of that instruction. You see, I worked here one. So anything I didn't know, I was already asking people about, as were my co-workers down on tier 1. But by not letting us submit anything at all, work came to a more or less standstill, with our higher ups one rack going back and forth and back and forth proofreading all our tickets before we could send them. This meant that they couldn't get any of their own work done until all of us temps left for the day. Which meant our already painfully slow ticket response time was 10 times slower who those noobs only able to submit 5 to 10 a day instead of the 20 to 30 we were doing just the day before the new absurd mandate. And the upper levels had no time to do tickets of their own after having to approve all of ours all day every day. It's really hard to explain how pleasing it was to watch the lazy higher up running around, because of course we all asked for her feedback since she clearly didn't agree with her fellow upper tier people's emails that we had to work with. So she and she alone could fully really tell us how to word things. Right? After all, I had a printed excel sheet, page after page after page of her tearing apart the replies her co-workers at her level had been using. And all our jobs were on the line over this, as we needed to show immediate improvement. This lasted a whopping 3 days before we were all fired. That's right, fired, because if the managers had to read and approve our responses, clearly we were not cut out for the job. You told us to get them approved, remember? But honestly, I don't care. It was the most entertaining 3 days I ever spent in tech support. I do feel a little bad for lazy workers co-workers who were also rocked to the bone doing our jobs as well as theirs. But since none of them spoke in our defense, clearly my sympathy for the plight is limited. The next story is called Still Waiting. As a former school board privacy officer, I dealt with many freedom of information requests from the public. Those dealt with anything, from salaries of senior employees to value of contracts awarded to emails about routine business. Occasionally someone would submit a very complex request that would require a lot of time to complete. So it was with one parent who wanted thousands of emails, committee meeting minutes, reports and the personal notes of a dozen different school board employees. The reason? She had requested that her children's bus stop move from the entrance of the cul-de-sac she lived on to right in front of her house. While the difference was only about 100 yards, the request was denied because the circle at the end of the cul-de-sac was too small for the bus to turn around. After working on the request for more than a month, she grew impatient and demanded to know what was taking so long. I tried to explain that I was a one-man operation, but she started making accusations that I was part of a conspiracy against her. 
She demanded that I produce all the records immediately or I will contact my lawyer. Now I'm smart enough to know that anyone who says I will contact my lawyer doesn't have one, especially not one who specializes in freedom of information requests. But playing along, I said, oh, we don't want it to come to that. I'll finish this today and hung up. So I did. The legislation requires that we charge 750 per 15 minutes of search time for records, plus 750 per 15 minutes of preparation time, plus other incidental costs, copying, printing, etc. Because I had to have ICT help with the emails and computer records, the charges added up rapidly. I called her back the next day and told her the first batch of records would be ready by the end of the week. Then I asked how she'd like to pay the costs. The cost, she said. What costs? How much? $4,870, I said. As I'm sure your lawyer will explain, 50% is payable up front before we proceed any further with the request. Then we can start on the next batch. Dad cried on the other end of the phone. You haven't heard the end of this. I'm calling the local news, she shouted and hung up. It is now three years later. Still waiting. The third story is called One Per Person. This happened a couple of years back on my co-worker's birthday. I ran out that morning to the party store to grab a small balloon bouquet. I wasn't going for anything fancy, just one Mylar birthday balloon with two or three solid color latex balloons to match, a fairly standard arrangement. It was a little after 10 am, the store had just opened and I was the only customer in there. I walked up to the counter to order my balloons and the woman working there asked me if I had pre-ordered. I told her I hadn't and she informed me that she couldn't do it for me. Apparently, if I didn't pre-order, it was their store policy that they could only do one balloon per person per visit. I looked around, I am still the only customer in the store. Now I would totally get why this would be something the store would have to enforce if there were other people waiting. But again there was nobody else there and filling up 3 to 4 regular balloons would maybe take about 2 minute stops. And it was pretty obvious at this point that this lady was really just being lazy. I apologized and explained that I wasn't aware of the policy and would remember to call ahead in the future. But I asked if she could help me out because I was trying to get them for my coworker whose birthday was that day. She answered me abruptly with a sorry store policy. I think about it for a second and tell her to hold on for a minute. If I can only get one balloon I would like to pick a different one. I went back to one of the birthday party aisles and found a package for a full bodied Mickey Mouse balloon. Now if you've ever seen one of these full bodied character balloons you'll know that it's made up of multiple parts. Head, arms, body, legs, feet etc. They need to be individually blown up and then assembled to create the character. This is then completed by putting weights and rollers on the feet so your balloon can walk. It is technically one balloon though. I went back and handed the package to the lady at the front counter, shrugged and said if I only get one balloon it might as well be a good one. I then proceeded to watch her struggle to figure out how to assemble it for the next 15 to 20 minutes. I can't say I've ever spent $20 on a single balloon before. But it was totally worth it to watch this woman angrily assemble my single balloon when if she'd just done what I had originally asked for I probably would have already been back at my office. I only wish I could have watched her watch me as I left, walking hand in hand out of the door with my freshly created Mickey Mouse balloon. The last story is called New Rules to Make Money From. These days in my country, most payments of products and services are regularly paid on bank branches with a reference code that is linked to the business account and automatically identifies who is paying. Before 2020, which now seems like a decade ago, people would carry cash, go to the business and pay for their product slash service there. But having been forced to do it online, by email or WhatsApp due to a certain virus, they started issuing payment instructions to pay at the bank or online. But people being people, they like to use cash and are not very fond of using their electronic bank to make all the payments. And generally, they don't trust the company's website to pay, due to a high number of card details being stolen and most websites not being very user friendly. So people now will line up in the bank to make these payments, making huge lines of all the new customers and making the old customers complain about it. My bank started to buy ATMs that would also take money to make payments. Before you could see one in each branch for free of the regular ones. But now they upgraded to free of the new ones and free of the regular ones to keep up with demand. Up to here that's fine and was very welcomed. Now on to the problem. A couple of weeks ago they issued a directive saying from October 15th no more service payments will be accepted in the branch, but only for the ATMs that take money. 
Use that or use the company's issuing the payments instructions website or take your money elsewhere. That, for me, was a huge problem. I receive from 3 to 10 payments for different companies every day. I'm a middleman in my business. And people like to come to me to hire the company's service and pay me for it, as I'm authorized to do. Me, being a good customer of this bank, with my account, credit card, house mortgage with them was an issue. Taking my money elsewhere was no easy task. Q, malicious compliance. I talked to my accountant and asked if I could deposit this cash into my own account and pay it with my own credit card without getting into trouble with the IRS. Surprise surprise, as I have such authorization as middleman to receive the company's money, as long as I spend exactly what I enter in the account, that's fine. So now I go to the bank, deposit into my account and pay with my credit card. And yes, now I get 0.7% in cashback for all payments done with my credit card. So now I make an extra 100 every month. On them. And with that we end today's video. Let me know what you think about the stories. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the stories and today's video? I hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Bye bye.